Hello friends, welcome to your science classes and this is part 2 for cell organelles. In part 1, the first video we have already discussed about two cell organelles that is endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus. And today we are going to cover rest of the four cell organelles which is lysosome, mitochondria, vacuole and plastids. So without any further delay, let us start with the lysosome. All right, you do remember the lysosomes? Right, we have discussed about it a little bit when we were discussing about Golgi apparatus. Why? Because these tiny vesicles are formed by your Golgi apparatus only. Right, so they are waste disposal system for the cell. How they are doing the waste disposal? Say for an example, any foreign material enters your cell like bacteria or any other uh, you know food waste food particle is there or any cell organelle has you know got ruptured or has got you know non-functional in all those cases where they will go they will just go to lysosome so lysosome is doing what it is collecting the garbage and it is going to get rid of it as well how it will get rid of it because of the presence of its powerful digestive enzymes now these are digestive enzymes. Does, do you remember from the previous video from where these digestive enzymes were coming in here? Digestive enzyme or any enzyme, they are made up of protein. There is this, um, you know, um, a common saying you can say that all enzymes are made up of protein. And you remember where the proteins were getting formed? Yes, absolutely right. That was on rough endoplasmic reticulum or RER. So RER was producing that protein, which was getting modified in the Golgi body and becoming enzyme. And this powerful digestive enzyme was packed by Golgi apparatus into a vesicle named as lysosome. So now my lysosome is packed with these powerful digestive enzyme and hence they are able to digest worn out cell organelle, any foreign material, material or any garbage in the cell. Right, so they are doing the complete waste disposal for the cell. Now there is another very interesting part for lysosome if we talk about and that part is say for an example just like we discussed that if any cell organelle is worn out or stop functioning properly just like that cell is also a small entity which can at times you know get worn out or stop functioning properly or get damaged in such condition how cell will you know get, go to any waste disposal system when the waste disposal system is inside the cell so the solution is in the lysosome only in such cases when your cell, complete cell is worn out or if there is any problem in the cell and it's not working properly in such cases lysosome burst open and when they burst the, the material which is inside them, which is powerful digestive enzyme, that will be released in the whole cell and it will digest the whole cell. So they are doing the waste disposal for whole cell. But think about it. Inside the cell, they, it, it is a tiny cell organelle and it is leading to the death of complete cell. So in this case, can we call it a suicidal bag? Yes, we can. So that is why this process of eating up the own cell in which they are organelle, this process is known as autophagy, right? And that is why lysosomes are at times ter termed as suicidal bag or suicide bag of the cell. I hope this was clear, right? I'm repeating it again. The powerful digestive enzymes are packed within the lysosome. If there is any problem in the cell, they, the lysosome burst open releasing the digestive enzyme outside and that digestive enzyme causes the digestion of whole cell in which results in killing of whole cell and that is why at times they are termed as suicidal bag all right now the next organelle is mitochondria you remember we discussed about this organelle which was having very distinct structure that is it is actually has got cover which is uh, not one but rather two different membranes first membrane is the outer membrane you can see it is continuous and it is highly porous but the inner membrane is very distinctive it has got so much of infolding in it 
this is giving it a very much distinct and specific peculiar structure to your mitochondria and this enfolding as we know as villi these enfoldings actually causes in in resulting in increased surface area where a special function can happen and we'll discuss about this function first of all let us discuss what mitochondria it is right so these are double membrane organelle we have just discussed the outer membrane and the inner membrane they are actually powerhouse of the cell okay so you can also call it kitchen of the cell where all the energy is getting produced right so how the energy will be produced the sugar which is ultimate uh, you know result of uh, digested food is further broken down in the mitochondria which results in energy production now this energy which is you know released by broken uh, breakage of sugar is stored in form of atp the full form of it is adenosine triphosphate now what is atp this atp you can consider as batteries or cells right so this is basically the energy currency of the cell like when you use a toy or any other machinery you use those a4 size or triple a batteries right what they have in it they have got energy in it and the second type of battery is rechargeable battery right so what you do you give it charge by you know putting it in the electric charger and once it is charged it can provide energy or power to your toy right maybe a car or something right so just like that atp is like rechargeable battery so whatsoever energy is being produced by break, broke the breakage of your sugar right breakdown of the sugar whatever energy is produced it actually helps in recharging your atp and this atp further goes on and helps out in various mechanical work which is happening inside the whole cell right so this atp because of uh, you know production of atp inside the mitochondria it is termed as powerhouse of the cell so mitochondria is majorly responsible for atp production right now what about these membrane so let us see the structure now you'll see the structure the outer membrane is very porous i have told you already and inner membrane has got many enfolding now think about it if you stretch this membrane completely you will see that this membrane is actually bigger than what it is appearing right now right because of this enfolding and because of this it is actually having greater surface area much more surface area what it should be having if it was a straight structure right so this enfolding is actually resulting in increased surface area why it is important because this is the place where generation of atp takes place and since it has larger area more atp can be produced and that is the complete importance of this folded inner membrane so on this inner membrane the chemical process of production of atp happens and this chemical process is called as oxidative phosphorylation all right so they are double membranous structure and there is another term here semi autonomous body apart from having these two special membrane this organelle is also very special in the sense it has got its own dna a little bit dna in it and also some own ribosomes that means this organelle is able to produce its own protein right and that is why it is termed as semi autonomous body all right so let us see what is atp now here is the complete understanding of atp will be there now we can see this is outer membrane outer membrane contain transport proteins for shuttling pyruvate into mitochondria right when we go further we see between outer and inner membrane there is a gap like structure right this gap is called as intermembrane space this small space is quickly accumulated by protons right 
and then you have the inner membrane this inner membrane contain etc that is electron transport chain and atp synthase this enzyme is the one which is actually helping out in this process oxidative phosphorylation which ultimately result into production of atp now in the matrix in the center this yellow color matrix you can see here this matrix has appropriate enzyme and suitable ph for the krebs cycle to happen and these christy these enfolding are called as christy they are highly folded so that they increase the surface area by volume ratio because these surface are actually the one where the atp production happens so there are certain terms which are not there in your ncrt when you'll talk about class 9 syllabus but this is a little extra knowledge so that you understand how atp production or atp synthesis happens all right so let us quickly go and revise about mitochondria first of all these are double membranous organelle they produce energy in the cell that is why they are also known as powerhouse of the cell sugar is broken down to form energy in the mitochondria and this energy release is stored in form of atp that is adenosine triphosphate this atp is basically energy currency of the cell all right and this atp is going to be used for mechanical work all right so now this is the structure the outer membrane porous while the inner membrane having enfolding these enfoldings are termed as christy right so i hope this particular very strange and very interesting organelle is clear to you so we'll move to the next organelle and which is plastid plastid are actually found only in plant cells all right and there are two types one is chromoplast and another is leucoplast now from where these plastid come they actually come from another type of cell which is called as proplastid from proplastic basically your etioplast comes out and etioplasts get further differentiated into chromoplast chromoplast has got a type like chloroplast and there is another colorless plastid leucoplast in general you can understand that there are two type of plastid chromoplast which is colored one and leucoplast which is colorless okay there are three type of leucoplast which are there for uh, storage of various things various material like amyloplast help in storage of starch elioplast help in storage of your fat while proteinoplast help in storage of your protein these names are also not mentioned in the ncrt only the storage particle or material is mentioned that means in ncrt it is saying that leucoplast helps in storage of protein starch and fat now what about chromoplast chromoplast is also further two types one is regular chromoplast which is actually giving imparting color to your flowers to various fruits vegetable which is not green that means red color of your apple is going to come from chromoplast and purple color of your egg plant is also going to come from chloro chromoplast right pink color rose is also because of chromoplast but when we talk about green color leaf green color stem so all the green color are entirely dependent on special plastid which is chloroplast right now chloroplast is uh, you know very important uh, uh, not just it is not just uh, imparting the color rather it is important because it is helping out in uh, photosynthesis right and i believe you all are aware of this process photosynthesis is the process by which sun energy is captured by the Uh, plant and it is converted into chemical energy all right so chloroplast because of uh, you know uh, taking care, taking out or you know producing and doing photosynthesis this chloroplast has got very special structure as well because it has to do this special function of photosynthesis so the special structure is again very much similar to your mitochondria right so this chloroplast has got double membranous structure outer membrane inner membrane but inner membrane this time does not have any enfolding it is also continuous just like outer membrane but inside a structure is very strange and very very different 
what is that inside a structure this is the stack of coin just like you have kept certain coins you know say 5 10 coins in a bunch and you have got several tower of those coins these uh, structure these towers are called as granum right and each individual coin like a structure is called as thalacoid and these coin stack or granum are not uh, are interconnected with each other by means of lamellae all right these structure are called as lamellae inside the thalacoid there is lumen and the you know protoplast like structure which is filling this complete um inner membrane or the complete cavity is called as a stroma this is the same thing jelly like structure which you found in uh, mitochondria as well and there we were calling it matrix but here it is called as a stroma is the same thing jelly like structure so these thalacoid or granum is basically responsible for capturing sunlight and converting it into chemical energy which can be further utilized for the process of photosynthesis which is formation of sugar all right carbohydrate or sugar which is produced by this uh, process all right now we'll see the internal organization it is same which i have already told you so we can skip this and we are need to revise this once right so plastid is there are two type of plastids in plant one is chromoplast which is colored another is leucoplast which is colorless leucoplast is utilized in storage of protein fat and starch while chromoplast impart color various type of color is imparted by chromoplast and a special chromoplast is chloroplast which is green in color and this chloroplast has got apart from just chlorophyll which is green it chromo this particular chromoplast has got other color pigments as well like yellow color and orange color pigment as well so this chloroplast is basically very special and this chloroplast is not just imparting green color rather it is involved in a very special process that is photosynthesis all right so i hope this plastid is also clear to you so we'll move to the last organelle which is vacuole okay now vacuole what is vacuole here again a very strange thing that vacuole is also found a mo mostly and majorly in plant cells right plant cells have large number and large sizes of vacuole you can see vacuole present in animal cells as well but they are present in special condition and if they are present they are generally smaller in size but in plant the vacuole has got very distinct role to do right now first of all let's see what the, these vacuoles are for they are basically the storage sack for solid or liquid content so plant cells have very big sack like structure in the center of their you know body and uh, you know these vacuole can be so big they can take up to 80 to 90% of the cell volume in plants right so they can take up majority of space and they will do what they will do storage for solid or liquid substances right there is a single membrane and this membrane is called as tonoplast okay and this tonoplast has got uh, certain pores on its surface so that communication can happen different type of transportation can happen right this point i have already told you that these are large in plant cell and smaller in animal cell now see the specific function now apart from doing storage for food and nutritive things that a cell needs to survive they also help in maintaining pressure within the cell this is specifically for your plant cell a special pressure which keeps them in their shape is called as turgor pressure and this turgor pressure is maintained because of the liquid filled in the vacuole so basically vacuole is doing what it is actually making your plant cell hold its shape because of the liquid stored in it and that liquid is creating a pressure which is called as turgor pressure now this is all about your plant cell vac vacuole but when we talk about animal cell vacuole there is a very special category of animal in which vacuole helps and that category is single cellular organism like amoeba now what uh, vacuole does in amoeba 
Now think once before we discuss this. Amoeba is a single cellular organism, right? And it is generally found in fresh water. By simple rule of osmosis, think about it. If amoeba is an organism, it must be having certain salts and chemicals or sugars dissolved in its body, in its cytoplasm, and it is found in fresh water. So what will happen by simple rule of osmosis, water will keep on coming in the amoeba because amoeba, inside the amoeba, the concentration will always be higher than the outside fresh water. So it will keep on coming in and amoeba being an animal cell does not have a cell wall as well. So this incoming water can result in bursting of amoeba, couldn't it? Yes, it can. And to prevent this, there is a special vacuole which helps amoeba. And that vacuole is called as contractile vacuole. Now contractile vacuole actually forms at the rear end or you know posterior end of the amoeba. It forms, it start collecting extra water and intermittently it bursts open and release that water. The moment it is burst open and releasing the water, just after that, another new contractile vacuole will form at the same place and it will start collecting the water, keep on growing and after a time it will burst. So this process is continuous and it, this process is basically helping amoeba to survive in fresh water, right? Apart from that, there are vacuole which store food, which we generally commonly call food vacuole in amoeba, right? And uh, yes, lysosome also can be termed as a vacuole as well. It's just a vesicle. So these are few function of vacuole. So this is all about various cell organelle in the cell. Please do let me know whether you understood the topic. Was any difficulty or clarification is still required? Do let me know please hit like and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on any new video and do comment and let me know which on which topic you would like to have more videos on. So till then, thank you so much. Bye-bye everyone.